again to You Made That, a podcast about makers, making, and the things that we make. And this week, I actually have a little energy and can do this. Woo! Woo, woo. woo. <laughs> I am Mike DeLauder, and as always, with me, Rebecca DeGroote and Bob Blanford. Hello. How the hell are you two this week? Hi. Pe- I'm Peachy King, <laughs> Jelly Bean. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. So great. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a good week. It's been a good weekend. <laughs> Sounds like your dog is happy this week. <sighs> That's Belle. She's right, she's made an appearance on almost every demo that I've done the last couple of weeks, <laughs> where she'll push the door open, come say hi, and just jump on my leg until I'll pick her up, and instantly I'll pick her up, and she'll fall asleep. <laughs> the big question is, though, in those demos, did you have shoes on or not? <sighs> my shoes were on. Although... I, I will admit I probably didn't have to wear shoes on the last demo that I did, but I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, well, Rebecca, why don't you tell us what you've been up to this week? <laughs> oh, oh, well, <laughs> if you insist. Okay, so I did a demo uh, this Thursday, this last Thursday, and I... I I've done demos similar to this. There's one that I have. It's called Variations on the Vase. And I have five different vase forms. Six if you include like the traditional vase form with the the little foot, chubby body, neck, rim, opening, all that. And then I have, um, I think, five different variations of that where there's hips added to the bottom in place of the foot, hips added to the side that shoot straight down. Um, with a rounded bottom, kind of a thick rim so that things can come out of the rim itself, a band around the middle where things can come out of the side straight out rather than shooting down, and then I think I have another variation where things can shoot up from the middle of the body. So I've got essentially variations of vases or variations of a vase where we talk about adding sculptural components to kind of a domestic object. And they didn't want that one specifically. They just wanted me to talk about adding sculptural components to turned items, which I'm like, all right, this is my jam. That's what I do. So I was really excited about it until the day before. And I'm like, how? What? Uh, eh. (laughs) What am I doing? Because there wasn't really a very specific direction with like an item that I was going to make. It was more like, all right, Talk about carving components, talk about legs, talk about coloring techniques, talk about this. And I'm like, okay, I can try to fit those like eight demos all into an hour and a half. And it, it, I, even now, because I haven't really had any feedback, which leads me to now thinking that I should send a survey out to the clubs to, to give me feedback after I'm done with a demo. I don't really know how I did. I don't know how they received it. I don't feel as confident about this one as I have of others in the past. I still feel like they got a lot of good information that they wouldn't have from other artists or other demonstrators. But just the fact that I can't say, I demonstrated this, makes me feel really uncomfortable with the outcome. But I do have a lot to show from it. So I showed them how to take from a board how to design legs. Um, on a piece of paper, cut that piece of paper apart, draw it out on a board, cut the board, glue it together, cut the spline, do all that, and then do the shaping of a carved leg. Um, I showed them three different coloring techniques. I showed them how to paint and do the reactive paint. I showed them how to ebonize and kind of how to create the ebonizing solution. I showed them how to create a gradient by hand with two colors of dye. Um, We also talked about how to position the sort of additives on a body of a piece to create hips or sockets that come out from a thing that aren't just drilled into the side and countersunk, but to make them come from the body out from the surface and then carve away any of the excess, which brings us to, momentarily, our sponsor this week is Sabretooth. 
as it is every week. And I was really excited because before the demo, I prepped um, my saber tooth tree that you guys can see behind me if I shift slightly. <laughs> <laughs> I finally wrapped it in Christmas lights. And they're the nice Christmas lights that aren't yellow. They're the LED like bright white lights so uh, michael mentioned before we started recording that like are there fairy lights on your drill press no there are fairy lights on my saber tooth tree which i'm really excited about and if you want your own saber tooth burrs go to sabertooth.com enter ymt at checkout and go buy your own and then put fairy lights all over your tree (laughs) fairy lights are optional (laughs) no (laughs) oh my goodness (laughs) no they're not (laughs) No, but I'm I'm really excited. And the demo was like, it, there was just a lot. There was a lot. And I, sh- I talked about um, what kind of objects you can add the sculptural components to. I showed them a bunch of my examples that I've done in the past. Like bowls is where I really started it. I showed them one of my first bowls I ever made. Um, we talked mm-hmm. about bowls, boxes, mushrooms, um, vase forms. We went over not just carving wood into different forms, but actually using the compressed wood from pure timber. Have you guys used that? No. It's really cool. You can, you take the wood, you like shape it and then you soak it in water and then bend it. And then you can keep shaping it some more because it, it just holds its form. And I just use rubber bands to um, make mine hold the form, Mm -hmm. but then it actually... Holds its form, and it you don't have any issues with the wood like breaking at a seam because there aren't any because it's one solid piece of wood. So I showed them all that, and I mean it was like it sounds. It's just a little all over the place, so there wasn't really a specific direction. So I I don't know how so, so, I did. So that's why you feel like it, it was maybe not successful because there was no specific direction. I think so. I think it's because there wasn't a finished product when I was done. There's just okay. a bunch of little pieces of products that were wor- were either from start to finish okay. or worked on a little bit. And it's just yeah. like, did I even do anything? I mean, they yeah. saw a lot. Mm-hmm. It definitely got a lot of information, but was it cohesive enough that they yeah. are going to ask for me to come back? Or <laughs> yeah. like, how is this going to go in the future? But I mean... I had fun and I had a lot of questions throughout and at the end. And it always makes me nervous too when they don't talk during the demo. I want people <laughs> to ask me questions. I want to keep kind of that that levity and sort of lightness to the demo. I don't want it to be serious and heavy like some of the demos are. It makes me you know, nervous. And I could see where that might be a little tricky because when you show somebody how to design and carve legs... That's very specific to the type of turnings that you do, but mm-hmm. your average your average guy or, or, or woman in a club is probably turning bowls and platters and boxes and the typical stuff, and they're mm-hmm. not thinking about making an art piece that actually you know has legs or spines or or spikes or anything like that. So, you know, the fact that I could see where you f- not make making a piece from start to finish would make you feel like maybe you didn't give them something because it. It was probably a good creative thing for them to see, but Mm -hmm. most of them probably will never do legs like you do, right? Most of them will probably never do spines or spikes on a turning. They're just not going to step that far out of their comfort zone. So I think they probably enjoyed the demo. I mean, I think because it's always fun to watch someone else and what they do and to learn. Uh, but I can agree, you know, I, I, I would, I think it makes sense for you to have some type of a request for feedback. Many people don't yeah. give it or don't fill it out, but, but you do need to feel completed yourself that you, you know, you present it and gave them, gave them a great demo. Mm-hmm. And I think if people ask me to do this kind of thing again, I think it'll, it'll be a little bit better the next time around. But this was my first time doing this specific demo. And my first mm-hmm. one is never as good as my second and third if it's the same one, obviously I plan on pairing some things mm-hmm. out or maybe not talking about one thing for very long and just touching on it rather than trying to spend like 15 minutes of the demo on one point where there's so yeah. much to cover. But um, if anybody from that club is listening, please let me know how I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I just don't know. I don't know. And I've, I, I've had... Most of my demos in the past, I've had people that have just been like, that's a great demo, like, mm-hmm. good work. I never thought of doing it that way. But this one was just kind of like, huh, okay, cool. 
Wow. Like, okay. And it, it didn't feel like it went badly, though. I just, you know, it's, I'm neutral on it. And, and, and it probably didn't because at our club, you know, we've had people come in and demonstrate. And before COVID hit, one of the last live demonstrations we had was a gentleman who is well known for making mirrors, hand mirrors came in and oh. made, and made a hand mirror. Well, I'm, I, I don't see myself ever making a hand mirror or ever needing to make a hand mirror, you know, but there were a lot of tips that I gleaned from him that I might be able to use, you know, in other areas of, of my turning. So it wasn't that it was a bad demo. It wasn't that I disliked it. It just didn't reach out and grab me. And mm -hmm. maybe because, you know, you didn't get the feedback or the instant questions from the audience. Maybe that's kind of the feeling you're having is, is, you know, but, but maybe, maybe they loved it. They just, it hasn't clicked for how they could use that in mm -hmm. their own shop. Yeah, and I I can see that too. It it is all of the stuff that I add onto my pieces. They're really far out there, and if anybody is going to try it, it's going to make their work stand out from the rest. But until they play around with the idea and mm -hmm. make it more of their own, it might just end up looking like a Degroot piece. Yeah, and it's it's going to be one of those things where how do I make those sculptural elements look like mine and not like hers so yeah. maybe there was just a lot of thought afterwards about it i don't know at least i hope i got them thinking about the possibilities taking their pieces away mm -hmm. from just the rounded mm -hmm. brown i bet it bothers you more than it bothered them probably well i hope it didn't bother them i hope they they just left with a lot to think about mm -hmm. <sighs> tell me so, about the fish yeah. Oh, bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I posted a picture of another polymer clay animal that I did right after I was working on my dragons. I was like, well, I, I kind of like this scaled look. So I made another really simple form. And I was thinking with the little dragons that I made that I talked about and showed off in the live podcast that we did. Um, they had legs and I'm like, well, what would happen if I just didn't put legs on it? So I started building the form. I was like, well, what is this thing? It's not anything. So it was like halfway up the body. I was like, well, look, let's put some fins on it so it can be a little fishy guy. And then I got to the face and it's definitely a fish with those big old lips. And it's, it's real cute. And I, I did I post it on our Instagram yet? Yeah, if I haven't. It. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's so, so funny. So, so I'm, on that uh -huh. fish, are, is there any plan to put a feral in the bottom of the fish and then put a Ruth Neal's bottle stopper so that he can... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I have thought about doing some stuff with polymer clay and her, her kits. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Maybe not that size because it's a big old fish. <laughs> Maybe a smaller one that stands yeah. up a little bit higher. I did make an octopus. Um, that should be interesting. You know, I could because they are from Ruth Nile's stainless steel bottle stopper mm -hmm. blanks. Um, as long as I take the little rubber O-rings off, I could actually probably bake it onto the the kit. I, I don't think you need to because with, with Ruth's bottle stoppers, uh, the ones that I have, they have a little brass ferrule that you you epoxy into your wood turning. So you could basically bake it with the brass ferrule and then that just threads onto the bottle stopper. So, I don't have those ones. Oh, well, you need to get some of those. They're really nice. <laughs> or really nice. <laughs> yeah, but, th but th that'd be a better way to go. Then you wouldn't have to worry about, you know, discoloring the bottle stop or anything like that. If, if you baked, I don't know that it would. I mean, I'm sure they're super high quality. But mm -hmm. but the and the, you can probably just buy the ferals. I bet you can go online and buy them. Probably. Uh, yeah. But uh, that, that's yeah. how I've built all of mine is I've just epoxied a ferrule into the bottom of the blank oh. and then just threaded it right onto the stopper. So <laughs> well, you could you yeah, fancy. Yeah, yeah I'm fancy. <laughs> but, uh, oh, so that would work but, great. I, 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 love, I love your clay stuff, and I keep thinking, you know, man, that would be a great tie-in for the bottle stoppers. Well, yeah. I have so much fun with it, and then I'm, they're just sitting around my house like, what am I going to do with all these things? You have At to least start I... drinking heavy so you got bottles to put them all in. I know, I know. <laughs> do a little uh, just, tasting I, every I evening. have to share an image that just popped into my head when Bob was saying fancy. <laughs> and I think you already know what I'm going for. Him in a yellow and black checkered outfit singing Ig Iggy Azalea's <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think I know about that one. <laughs> what, I'll watch it on YouTube later. I, I don't know who Iggy Azalea is. 
<laughs> and it just makes that, it that much more, is, is, more funny. Is, is that bad? Who? I mean, are they a bad person? What? No, no. <laughs> no, she's a female rapper. Is she a rapper? She's a rapper. Yeah. Oh, she's a female that ex- rapper. That would explain why. She was why like I don't started getting big around 2013, I think. 2013 or 14. You know, I'm not even going to look it I know up. Her name. I'm not even going to look it up because I don't want I don't want the algorithm on YouTube to start feeding me. <laughs> <laughs> crap <laughs> you know <laughs> you know rappers are like a box of candy the first thing you do is or music's like a box of candy the first thing you do is throw out all the rappers right <laughs> <laughs> i'm hey, sorry like i'm sorry I, I like old school rap like from the 80s right you know yeah. sugar hill gang things like that i'm just not into the new stuff so to Groot, you got to talk into the mic so we can hear you yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have a, a, another visitor in the room. We've had two that have come in during the recording so far. I have to keep an eye on them, make sure they don't walk off with one of the legs that I s- still have at face height for them. <laughs> as long as it's not a trash panda, you're fine. Hey, yeah. Speaking of trash pandas and other forms of wildlife, there have been no new noises from the attic, but I have been looking up some nice pictures of um other possums to make a nice little illustration of the one that was in my attic. <laughs> so I've, I've got some really good pictures. And Polymer I'm clay work possum. From those. Huh? Polymer clay possum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. I was just going to draw it. <laughs> um, Let me see if I can reach the door with my foot. So, you know, I can keep talking into the mic. <laughs> Yeah. What, what have you guys been up to? Not we're as only, much as you. We're only what twenty minutes in, and we've only talked about me. You want to go Bob next, and Michael? I live vicariously through you. We we do we do. It, it's all about the polymer clay. You want to go next, Michael? Uh sure. Okay, uh, you go ahead. So before Christmas, I had that ten pen order where I was making pens out of the the wood from the basketball court. Mm-hmm. And the gentleman I sold those pens to showed them on Facebook. And the next thing I know, I have orders for 30 of them. Oh, wow. Uh, That's a good problem to have. Yay. Yeah. And uh, I screwed up and said, okay, it'll be about a two-week lead time. Not thinking that I needed to check on pen kits first. Ah. So I I reached out to Nails Matheson at the Classic Nib, also now the owner of Arizona Silhouette. Oh, did not know that. Yes. he uh, Barry Gross got out of the uh, pen kit business. Uh, he's There's something new he wants to do, from what I understand. Well, good but for I don't both know of what them. it is. Yeah. But uh, he and <clears throat> Nels worked out a deal, and Nels and Debbie bought the Arizona Silhouette. Wow. that That is awesome. Good for mm-hmm. both of them. I, I don't know Barry yeah. personally, but, uh, you know, I've heard the name many, many times. So good, good for both of them. Good for both mm-hmm. of them. But uh, he only had 11 of the kits and I needed. Oh, okay. Uh, and he wasn't sure when he was going to place his next order. And originally I said I'd wait for him, but then I got to thinking, if I wait too long, You're gonna I'm going to be I'm gonna be in trouble on this order. So I, I went ahead and reached back out to him and said, I'm going to go ahead and order from overseas, uh, and I'll catch you on the next order. So, Nels, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I, but I will. You know, I'll... I'll hit him up next time that I've got yeah. an order like this. Love Niels and Debbie, man. They're great people. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's what I, uh, the kits should be here the 19th, and then I can start working on it. That's oh, God, awesome. That's tomorrow. No, it isn't. It's Tuesday. That's Tuesday. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome, Michael. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> same, same day we're having somebody here to measure the opening so that we can replace this god-awful sliding glass door in the house. <sighs> With French doors. Nice, Ooh. nice. So you're still uh, working on the kitchen project then? Uh, actually, this is dining room. Mm-hmm. But uh, the reason we need to do it is we're breaking the handles off this door, opening and closing it. It's got plastic oh. wheels on the bottom. Oh. And the, uh, the aluminum runner that this wheel sits on is so chewed up yeah. that I'll guarantee it's metal on metal now. 
every time we open it. So we'll buy a handle, and within two weeks, there's a crack in it. Yeah. And the next thing you know, the handle breaks off, and all we have left are these two little nubs of where the handle would have attached to hold on to to try and open and close the door. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's... Well, plus, the French doors will look so much nicer. You know, mm-hmm. they, got that, they got a nice look to them. That's where our stimulus money is going, is French doors. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> nice. Yeah, well, it's one of those, you know, we it's kind of found money, so let, let's do something on the house. <laughs> yeah, do something extra with it. Mm-hmm. Well, some, yeah. some, some contractor and some, you know, somewhere makes a little money, and then he mm-hmm. goes and buys a door, and they make a little money, and then somebody builds that door. So, yeah, it's yep. all, I mean, that's what the stimulus check is, is supposed to be about, right? So I'm not going to pay down my debt. I'm going to stimulate the economy. <laughs> debt. What's debt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what have you been up to, Bob? Well, I have had a great week slash weekend in the shop. Um, I went ahead and did a, a third record crate. I decided I needed a third one uh, because I had two, and I could get by with two, but you know it's a little tight. But I wanted to build something to put between them. I'm going to call it a stacker to be able to stack them so that I could sort them while standing at arm's height, right? And it just didn't look right. It was just, I I mocked it up and it was just too tall. I didn't like it. So I built a third crate to put in the middle. And now my stackers are like seven and a half inches tall. So you put a crate on the floor, put a stacker, put a crate, put a stacker, put a crate. And the top crate I can stand and sort at a very comfortable position. Uh, so I've got the three crates done. The stackers have been cut out. They've been routed, sanded, drilled. They're ready to assemble. They, they're on my, um, saw right now waiting to be stained. I didn't get to them today because today I'm so excited. I, if you've been following me on Instagram, I got back on the horse. Uh, I turned a couple of pins today. It's been a long time since I've had, you know, the desire to do that. And uh, the first one I turned (laughs) was kind of funny. Um, I, I, I wanted to turn it for two reasons. Number one, I put a new camera mount in my shop and I wanted to, I, I'm going to call this video turn and test, right? And because I'm testing the camera mount, which didn't work out, it's coming down. It's terrible. So <laughs> right off the bat, it was instantly like this, it's not working. So that's a whole nother story. So that's coming down, but I turned the pin and, and I wanted to get the touch back, right? Cause you want to make sure you're comfortable with your tools before you turn a more expensive blank. So this was just a wood, uh, wood blank, right? and um, ambrosia maple and i turned it and it turned i was perfect i mean i was dead on the 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 memory came back muscle memory with the tool it turned perfectly i was so happy and i found out when i finished it that letting your ca glue set for eight months it gets old Uh, (laughs) yeah so it kind of gets hard too and yes it it gets gummy mine was so gummy and would not dry and uh, so i ended up finishing the pin three times, sanding it all the way down and refinishing it. And finally, the third time I got it right. Of course, I, I am, I'm in the market for some CA glue right now. Uh, I got it right, and I made a fundamental mistake when I went to put the pin together. I, I forgot because I haven't done this for eight months. I did not check my tube and clean the tube. And mm-hmm. while I was putting the CA on all three times, CA gets into the tube and it gets around the perimeter. And what it does is it makes the diameter, the inside diameter smaller. So when you press the component in, it stretches the brass farther, which causes the blank to split. Oh, no. So I split the blank at press time. And I thought I was right at the end. I was ready to finish up and be done. And I, I had a video and everything and I blew it. And uh, so I was really kicking myself because I, I just totally forgot. Right. I mean, it's, it's been so long. I was so excited. The turning was great, you know. But I got right back on the horse. I popped a, uh, a true stone blank on the lathe that uh, I started the true video. Stone. True stone is, yeah. Well, true stone's <laughs> a type of material. Uh, it, it it's actually uh, Michael. It, it, it's stone, right? And they they they, yeah. they it, the it's like I a slurry, it, and they yeah, it's like pulverized stone that they put into yeah. a slurry that they color and it's put beautiful. veining in. It's yeah, it's. Great and uh, uh-huh. I had started this video a while back where I had these two Taylor Murfield pins and I asked my viewers to pick the blanks. I, I gave maybe 14 or 15 blanks and this is the one they picked for this pin. And I had it all drilled and, and, and squared and ready to go. So I popped it up on the lathe, grabbed the old skew, turned the heck out of it and made a gorgeous, gorgeous pin. But I had a small problem with it too. 
and it's in the video as I'm polishing, I'm, I'm at the end, right? And, I, and I'm, I'm polishing the wax off of it. When I polish it, it caught a little bit and it, it pulled it out of my hand and it hit the neural nut on the, um, on the, the, the uh, polishing wheels and put two little scars in the cap blank. So oh. I pulled the cap blank off. I put it back on. I re micro meshed it, ended up taking them completely out, repolished it. It looks perfect. It is shiny. It looks gorgeous and you cannot see the scars. And I got it all put together and it turned out absolutely beautiful. Uh, so I was so happy, but I, I gotta say a, a while back on this podcast, you know, I, I made the, made the claim that I was no longer going to turn pins with my, uh, roughing gouge. I was going to start using a skew and I've been using a skew ever since. And I was super nervous when I popped that, uh, that true stone on there because it's, it's got a reputation, right? But, uh, the skew just just destroyed it it was awesome it was so smooth so beautiful i did have to restrop it a couple of times because it gets dull quickly that material is hard on a blade uh, so once i got it true i stropped and then about halfway through the turning i stropped and uh, it just it just peeled off in these beautiful little angel hairs and i was so happy with how it looked i didn't have any any chip out any any uh, you know of the where it so skips where it kind of gets that wobbly look to it it mm-hmm. just turned like a dream uh, which I, I mean, I was nervous the whole time because I had heard the horror stories, but, but I was super happy. So there'll be a video on that coming out. Uh, I have to do a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of editing, but I was happy to get back on the horse. And, uh, now that I've, I've done that first one, it's, you know, I'll get some CA glue and I'll be back turning pins. You know, it's just a matter of getting reorganized. I've, I've got hundreds of them in the shop that are ready to go. I just haven't ever turned them. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great great weekend i feel great it was good being in the shop um so yeah for me it was wonderful that's awesome finally finally getting back you know it's mm-hmm. i had to get over that funk i was in and i think i think i finally come out of it yeah you sound really happy yeah i'm feeling i'm feeling a lot better you know yeah. i'm feeling a whole lot better so that's good that's great This is making me really happy that you guys are happy and that everyone's better and we're all healthy. And I'm just, I'm, I'm very, I feel very positive. Well, better enough, good enough that we are here. (laughs) We're all back. Everything feels more normal ish. Normal ish. (laughs) Ish. (laughs) Everything just needs a little ish now. You know, and I think, I think, as you say, everybody's happy. They're feeling better. They're getting back. I think this kind of lends itself to the topic we'd like to talk about today is, you know, we've all talked about, I want to try this. I want to try that. And I think each of us has something that we would potentially like to try. And uh, I think maybe today would be a great day to talk about that since we're all getting, you know, really getting into uh, being in the shop and working again. So who would like to start, Michael? Well, look at that. We're out of time. (laughs) (laughs) uh one of the one of the things i've always wanted to try to turn is a sphere and you know i have the tools to do Mm -hmm. it but i don't have the uh uh, well for lack of better word clamps you know people have like the rubber chuckies or uh the carter and sons sphere turning ends mm-hmm. that you can put in for your live mm-hmm. and dead center. I don't have anything like that. Is it, so if Carter? I were going to do that, uh, well, I could possibly carve it or I could turn it. You know, some people. No, no, no. I, turn. I th- you said Carter and Sons. I think you're thinking Carter. I thought right? it was Carter and Son. Are you talking but, about the blue and yellow ones? Yeah. That yeah. one's Carter. Oh, okay. I know. It's My really bad. confusing <laughs> having Carter products and Carter and Sons both in the same field, but mm-hmm. Carter. Okay. My bad. No, it's good. It's all good. <laughs> so people know. Carter is, it's owned by a really cool bunch of people. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Go on. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would love to have a pair of those from Carter, but they're spendy. So mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to make some wooden ones mm. that uh, will fit over my live and dead centers and try and turn a sphere. That is awesome. I'll probably end nice. up gluing up some of that hickory you sent me. Or not hickory. Mesquite. Mesquite. Ooh. Make a mesquite That'll be awesome. Sphere. You know what I would recommend? Um, if you're going to be using wood, if you have anything to pad the 
the pieces leather. with. Huh? I was I was planning on putting leather between the chucks and okay. what I'm going to turn. Yeah. Yeah. Something hefty enough that it's not yeah. going to burn through it if it starts to spin. But mm-hmm. yeah, because when I turned my first sphere, my first freehand sphere, I think I just used like wooden blocks that sort of held it in place and it just kept burning every time I would it was usually when I was on sanding so after mm-hmm. I was already done turning and ever after it was already like as nice as it could be then I was sanding and it would catch and it would pull and it would burn a little ring into it and then I'd have to switch it over again and it, then it wasn't true anymore and it was it was mm. a nightmare now have you ever c- used one of those sphere jigs yeah I was going to ask about that they look I like have... they'd be fairly easy to make yeah, well, I don't know about making one. Um, I, I'd have to be able to see one complete to see. We had a guy in our club make one one time, Michael, and I don't know if really? we did a club video on it or not, but essentially he just took a round carbide cutter and put it on a post, and then he mounted that post on a on a piece of wood that instead of putting his, you know, where your tool rest is, he, he, mm-hmm. he um, it, it clamped onto the... Uh, ways of the lathe and then it just rotate it okay and then he would just come in and he would crank it in a little bit lock the nut down and he would you know roll back and forth on the uh the sphere until he got it where it was round and then he took it out of the chuck and rotated it into the cup chucks like you're talking about so that he could get you know re-round the uh mm-hmm. the nub and it mm-hmm. looked pretty simple i'll i'll have to look and see if that video was out there okay i don't, I don't remember we recorded yeah. that one or not as long as the pivot point is directly under the center of the sphere, you should be fine. Yeah. 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 But I've got a sphere jig. I just I haven't used it that often. I used one at a, one of my first couple AAWs. I got to go into the Carter booth and got to play with theirs. So they're, yeah, they're a lot of fun. And it's super straightforward. And all you do is just move it in slightly, bring it around bring it back, move it in slightly, bring it around, bring it back until you're done. I could see using that if you were going to be making a ton of spheres. Right. But if you're just doing it for fun, I Mm -hmm. think I'd rather do it by hand. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least learn to do it by hand first and then go to a jig if I wanted to. Yeah. And they're a lot of fun to do by hand, too. I, I like doing them by hand more. I feel like it's a little challenge that I get to, like, I don't know, I enjoy it. I like it. But yeah, so you're going to make a sphere, just one? I'm, I'm going to commit to the chucks. <laughs> 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 uh, I tend to run out of gas real fast in the evenings. By the time I get home from work, I'm if I can't get something done by 7, I'm pretty much screwed on getting that done that evening. So... uh I don't, I don't know if I'll get around getting the sphere, but I, I think I can get the chucks done at least. So I'm cheating, cheating a little bit. <laughs> You're fine. You're making progress toward a goal. Yeah, I, my, my goal is to walk without getting winded. <laughs> Ugh. Moving the daughter into college this, this past week and uh, showed us all, because we all had the COVID. Mm. Um exactly how bad it hit our lungs so we we were all huffing and puffing and wheezing by the time it was done that's not good no all right bob this is your idea what are you gonna do well i've been talking about doing this for quite a long time and and i've done it before but i wanted i want to start start attempting it again is and i think rebecca i don't know if it was the last podcast or the one before that she made some pop boxes uh-huh. and uh, they're little boxes that basically you, you just bas- build a lid and, and they, um, you turn them on a lathe and yeah, they make a pop sound when you pull them apart. You've got a nice tight fit and I have turned them before. I don't think I did a video on them when I did and I probably won't do a video for this, but my objective and what I want to work on is I want to turn another box. I want to get back into turning boxes. <laughs> this- <laughs> <laughs> this is very distracting, Rebecca. That's very distracting. <laughs> what? <laughs> Michael started it. 
It's always the kid who does it second that gets caught, though. You know that. You're a teacher, I right? Know. One kid smacks another, and he hits him back, and you catch the kid hitting back, right? No, I'm just... He <laughs> uh, so, hit me first. <laughs> so, I, I, like I said, I want, I want to turn more boxes. I enjoyed turning boxes when I did it, but I've only turned a couple, and it's time for me to get back on that horse, and I need to start turning different items. And one of the reasons why I know I need to start turning different items is I, I've been talking about my new SKU. And I finally realized my new SKU is not for turning pins. It's too. It's like using a bazooka to kill a fly. <laughs> it's, 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 it is the most incredible tool with the most incredible feedback, but it's overkill for that little pin. It's just, it, it's too much. So it's, it's more for turning meteor, doing meteor turnings. So I thought, well, I need to start turning some boxes. I can use the skew to do the outside of the box, you know, and that that's going to be perfect. So I'm excited about that. And that's, that's my objective is to, to uh, turn some pop boxes. You could, you could start big and maybe turn a lamp. No, no, I don't have a big enough lathe for that. Plus I don't need a lamp. A short lamp. (laughs) I just sit in the dark all the time. Like a bedside lamp. It's like, I don't want anybody to know I'm home, so I, I keep the lights off. <laughs> Damn it. That's why I never see you around the house anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I got I to gotta hone up my stalker skills. They've been rusting with the COVID and everything. Yes, I'll say. <laughs> He's not even paying attention. He's reading something on his phone. He's hey, so I'm distracted. looking for the IKI. I'm looking for the demo for you. <laughs> Matter of fact, I just found it, so I'm sending it over. I, I I got a question for you. What the heck is that icon that you're using on on the uh, the uh, uh, Facebook Messenger? Facebook Messenger. I don't know. What, what, oh, is it Chris Farley? Yes, it might be. Yeah, okay. That's it's Chris Farley when he's. Doing the skip, trying out for Chippendales. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> the, okay. The video you guys made me watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's burned into my memory. <laughs> now just cut and, cut and paste my face onto Chris Farley. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, what I'd like to do, <laughs> can I change the subject? Is it time? You may change the subject. Yes, please. <laughs> I Using... would like, huh? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'd like to challenge myself to finally, and I know I've been saying this for months, get my stinking welder out of the box and get it set up. Nice. Even, Even just to take a couple pieces of scrap bar that I've, got and just tack weld them together into something i just want to do something it's nice weather the last few days it probably will be tomorrow still i don't have a demo until tuesday which i've done this one twice in the last month or so so i'm all ready for it i don't really have to put any extra thought into my plans for tuesday other Mm -hmm. than for school so i could just spend all day monday if I'm focused, <laughs> which is a rare occurrence, me being focused. <laughs> but if I focus on it, I think I can do this. And I think even if I just get it out on a table or pull it out to the driveway and move my car out of the way and just play in the driveway, I've got my welding jacket. Mm-hmm. I've got jeans that I can put on. I've got like my safety, everything. I've got gloves. I've got the shield. I've got everything. I just need to do it and it's just for whatever reason i'm terrified and i don't know why Have maybe you i think welded before you know I, I, yes i've welded before i welded a giant like six foot flamingo in college yeah. and i've got a table in my living or in my parlor that's half metal half wood i've welded a good amount enough that i understand what needs to be done and i'm sure i'm gonna watch a bunch of youtube videos yeah either tonight or first thing tomorrow morning and get myself set up and I just want to do it, and I've been wanting to do it forever. You just need a project just... to get you to something to focus on, right? Mm-hmm. I've got the project. I know what a, you could do. Is it a giant spider that hangs from my pine tree? That's a good project, too. Because <laughs> that's I, what's I was, been going was, through I, my head. I, that was oddly specific. 
<laughs> that was a very oddly. I was going to suggest unicorn horn on Henry's car. Ah, okay. So Big you don't horn. want a third member of the podcast. <laughs> no, I like that. I was going to say Big AKA spider. pedestrian spear. Ah. Big, Big spider is a cool idea though. Only you just right? keep an eye on it. Make sure you put a chain on it so somebody can't steal it because that would be so cool. I bet it would disappear. Right. Well, if I could just like have it drive, like look like it's climbing up the tree instead of hanging from it too, that would be even better. Yeah, that would be like yeah. one of those spiders on Harry Potter when he and Ron drive that car into that, or the car comes in to rescue him there and all the spiders mm-hmm. are coming after him. Uh, so we actually, I was, <laughs> Henry just showed me something earlier today. Um, the dog. Uh, oh, wow. Hagrid's dog's name. Fang, apparently, <laughs> during the filming of that, what? <laughs> during the filming of that part of the movie, like, Fang kept try- like jumping in front of Harry and Ron trying to protect them from the animatronic spiders. <laughs> so they had to reshoot that spot, like, so many times because the dog kept being so protective. And it turns out that Fang's a girl. <laughs> oh, wow. In real life. That, that would have been a hard scene for me to shoot because I would have been so freaking creeped out the entire time that I, I don't know that I could have shot that scene. You know, so. Well, have you have you seen the sculptural work of Louise Bourgeois? I don't know. She was a French-American artist who does these gigantic hulking spider pieces. Mm-hmm. And a lot of her work um, kind of speaks to feminism and motherhood and kind of the protective qualities of mothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really fascinating. And there's a lot of sculptures all over the world. I love them. And somebody introduced me to her work after I started putting legs on all my stuff. And then they they pointed me to her and I'm like, oh, my God, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, who is this? So I ended up doing a paper on her in college and forgot most of what I wrote. But still her work is incredible and every once in a while somebody will find like a picture of it online and it's all welded so it's all metal and these just giant forms they're typically black and a couple months ago somebody tagged me in a post of like one of her spiders um in the water and it looks enough like driftwood that they're like look at this giant driftwood spider and i'm like you idiots it's metal (laughs) you don't even know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um yeah that's just yeah anyways louise bourgeois i'll add all her right, to the right. show notes if you guys want to look her up because it's really cool stuff that but, is cool yeah so so now now that we've all said hey this is something we want to try we want to do rebecca do you want to tell us what what's happening next oh next week yes what what yeah we, we've all we've all stated something so now let's tell the listeners what's supposed to happen so we have not only challenged ourselves to do a thing but that's that's not enough we need to take it one step further and actually hold ourselves accountable so next week we will be reporting on our homework <laughs> and uh <laughs> telling everyone our our seven listeners how we did and if we did what we said we're going to do so hopefully that see that's one of the things that actually motivates me to do something is if i go and tell a big group of people hey i'm gonna do this thing and i've actually accomplished quite a bit of stuff after announcing that i'm gonna do it on the podcast i probably wouldn't have otherwise (laughs) would it be considered cheating if i broke down and bought the chucks from carter i don't think so well if you buy the chucks from carter are you going to turn a sphere by next week i only committed to making the chucks so. <laughs> then that would definitely be sort of cheating okay how about getting set up with a sphere turning chuck setup you teachers and your <laughs> your ways I know, we're just awful. Always making you do extra work. Always got to cross the T's and dot the I's (laughs) and lowercase J's. So I don't don't know. Do you feel like you will have accomplished what you set out to accomplish if you only just bought the checks? Sure. Why not? I mean, I'm asking you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm that much closer to making a sphere, so yeah. Hey. But I'd yeah. be that much poorer, so Ah, uh, yes. 
And it's a pretty, it's a pretty simple concept. It's just finding the time and having the energy to do it. I mean, Th one thing might be, the big one. <clears throat> huh? The second part is the big one, energy. Mm -hmm. Energy. Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have to do more of this, where we, you know, we we try new things. I mean, we all need to grow a little bit. So, you know, I think I think if you get yourself set up, Michael, then of course the next step is you're gonna have to turn one at the next juncture uh, yeah, and uh, report yeah. out on that mm -hmm. uh, to, to take this concept further maybe we should challenge each other <gasps> to make something at some point Ooh, yeah i think yes. i think that's i think that's going to be a great idea i think so too should do should we talk about that other thing that might come in the future do we want to talk about it i'm really excited about it i challenge michael <laughs> to make a dress <laughs> And to wear it on the podcast, and we'll do a we'll do a, a Google. <laughs> we'll a Google invite Jeff on. Horning back. Yeah, exactly. We'll invite Jeff Horning back. <laughs> Jeff will wear his dress, and <laughs> and they'll sing the song from White Christmas Sisters. That's what I challenge you to do, Michael. Sister, sisters, sisters. <laughs> the only oh, reason God. I know that is because my wife makes me watch White Christmas. Whoa! Every don't say makes. Year. That's my that, that's my favorite Christmas show every year. That's the first one we watch. Don't say <laughs> makes me. That's one of the all time greats. I'm not sure I've ever seen it. <laughs> <laughs> we gr I grew up in a non Christmas household. We didn't watch the classics. Well, next next year, that's your homework. Next year for Christmas is you and Henry need to watch White Christmas. It's an okay. oldie but a goodie. Okay, I like Elf. Elf, yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas, that's a good one. Although that's a double holiday special, so, you know. Did you ever see Scrooged? No. It's got Bill Murray in as uh, Scrooge. I love Bill Murray. Oh, you gotta watch it then. Tangents. Yeah. Tangents. <laughs> <laughs> Especially as Garfield. Me. It's not me tonight. <laughs> Normally, I get busted for the tangents. <laughs> All right. Dad jokes. Ari, right, did you oh. wanted to talk about the... Go ahead. Oh, talk. do we get talk to talk, talk about talk. it? Sure. Okay. As a teacher, I love seeing how other people teach things. And I love learning and watching demos. And <sighs> this is the season of demos. I want each of you and myself to teach each other something round robin style. So what I'm proposing and what I think we kind of work together to sort of plan out, but I, I, I just went off with it, <laughs> is that each of us decide what the others are going to teach us. For example, you two decide what I am going to teach you guys. Michael and I decide what Bob is going to teach us. And Bob and I decide what Michael is going to teach us. And not only are we teaching each other this thing, but we're also teaching you guys in a live demo performance. Whoop, whoop. Three, three separate occasions. <laughs> Schedule to be announced eventually. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm saying it live. Well, we still and, got I have a lot an of idea to float together on what we teach Je or Rebecca. Oh, okay, good. We'll talk offline. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. I, I'm gonna, wait. I'm going to say it now. Okay. Okay. How to pee standing up. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> you know, there's something you could buy on Amazon. I've seen it. <laughs> we, will, we will come up with something. I, I know, I know. Rebecca, Rebecca has uh, experienced far more turning than we have so turning is probably out but there's bound to be something else shop related or or there's got to be something else that we can work with and and, and teach rebecca there's got to be well you're not you two aren't getting together to teach me something right right okay right but see you you're the wild card because like when you and michael say well what what can bob teach us right yeah i mean you've turned pins before so there's not going to be anything in regard to pen turning Right. Yeah, I mean, there might be. I'm still. I just. I know that pens are pens, and you turn a pen, and it either has 
one or two parts and that's about the extent of it and lots yeah. of different bushings everyone is very specific yeah, yeah. and it drives me crazy because i don't label them yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes the bags get mixed up and who knows what bushing this is anymore that happens. that happens. You guys could teach me all sorts of stuff, and hopefully none of it well, has good. to do with bushing. I'll teach that, that, that. you to turn between centers and not use bushings. Oh. Oh. <gasps> it's just been turning with the caliper, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this. I like this idea. So, yeah. Yeah. This is something we talked about in the very beginning when we were thinking about doing a podcast and we just forgot about it until today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so been a lot going on. So I think this is going to be, this is going to be fun. And I like the idea now that we've had a chance to do a live, a Google live. I like the idea of doing it live so that it mm-hmm. can be recorded. Yeah. Uh, folks can be on there and, and watch live and then folks can go back later and watch after the fact if they're interested. So I think, uh, I think this is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. So just pick something simple for me. Don't pick anything too hard, okay? <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I need my flames in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and you need your bunny ears. You need some bunny, you need bunny yes. ears. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's what I should make. I, I bet I have some fabric around here somewhere. I know I have wire. I could make some bunny ears. Be great. Uh, I, I think this is good. I think this is going to be down. fun for everybody. I think it'd be fun for us. I think it's going to be fun for the listeners slash viewers mm-hmm. because uh, mm-hmm. so yeah. So and if if you're interested, just throw this out real quick. We have a uh, a YouTube channel now. There's only one yeah. video out there. The YouTube channel is you made that with a question mark, no spaces, and you will see the logo pop up. And the live that we did two weeks ago is posted out there. Um, of course, it is basically just what you're listening to. However, you can see us and in the background, a bunch of other folks who were kind enough to join us. Uh, And uh, so if you're interested in watching, please do that. But we have that medium set up now so that we can do things like this. So if you guys have ideas for things like this, maybe at some point we'll let you guys challenge us. What would you like to see us show you? So keep that in the back of your mind that that's an option there, maybe. So it's going to be fun. I think so. All right. Dad jokes. Who's got them? I got one. <laughs> My goodness. I was on a, How about I Rebecca was on goes a, first? <laughs> <laughs> I got them. I got them. I was really prepared this week. I was on a diabetes awareness website and it asked me if I accept cookies. Is this a trick question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's harsh. That's harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got another one. <laughs> Play, playing in with the, her food theme, my my therapist says I can get over my fear of buffets, but first I've got to really want to help myself. <laughs> oh man, why why did the Invisible Man turn down a job offer? He couldn't see himself doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've got another one, and I love this because you guys know how much of a dinosaur fan I am, <laughs> or at least you should. <laughs> I always buy my weapons from a guy called T-Rex. He's a small arms dealer. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> gravy <laughs> that's all i got how about you michael all anymore? right nope no more i'm done show's over goodbye <laughs> later <laughs> uh well if anybody would like to find anything about me on the social medias you can find me at lost river pens on facebook instagram and my website lostriverpens.com Rebecca, do you have your link tree made up yet, or are you still reading everything? I'm just going to I'm gonna opt out of the second YouTube, just because I haven't posted more than like the three <laughs> videos I did it last year sometime. <clears throat> Facebook and YouTube, Rebecca DeGroot. Instagram, Rebecca underscore DeGroot. Website, RebeccaDeGroot.com. Etsy, and Redbubble. 
Rebecca DeGroote Studio Etsy is without spaces. Road Bubble has spaces. Excellent. Yeah. And for me, um, on Instagram, RJB Wood Turner. I've been fairly active there lately. Uh, as for uh, YouTube channels, you can find me at RJB Wood Turner. Videos coming soon. They were recorded today. They just need to be edited. And my second channel, my shop vlog channel, is What You Doing, Bob? And I've been very active on that channel lately. Yes, you have. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm getting back in the game. Yeah, you are. That's a good thing. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in this week. We appreciate it. Uh, make sure to share this program with your friends, your relatives, your enemies. We're, we like to be equal opportunity offenders. So. Don't, don't forget about your grandma. My grandma? <laughs> oh. Everybody's grandma. I don't have a grandma. Your neighbor's grandma. My neighbor is a grandma. That works. <laughs> 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 All right. Find somebody's grandma and tell them about us. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Everybody have a great week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I don't know. Just be good. Yeah. Yeah. So bye. 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 Hasta la vista, baby. Love you. Nice way to put a shine on it. <laughs>